nah. It's just not budging. It's great. Yes, yes. <laughs> I realised I probably look a bit rough today, this morning, six o'clock, and as you can see, we are no longer in the marina. We are a tanker. And the first thing that happened was when we put the boat into a stern, the boat barely moved. And then as we came out of the slip, uh, the boat wasn't going where I wanted it to go. It turns out we lost steerage, we lost torque, in the propeller presumably because it is full of barnacles and in fact the fenders that would popped over the side had grown barnacles on the bottom where they were touching the water so i suspect there's a lot of growth down there anyway we chugged our way out at about two knots or less came past all the um the boats that are, are, are an, a tanker just in this bay outside of the marina and sunda kalapa which is the main uh, port in this area a bit too late last night to do anything about it so we just uh, had a drink and went to sleep we had these prevailing easterlies they're like an afternoon breeze and so it was quite lumpy yesterday the anchorage but as you can see this morning it's beautifully calm no one's around and it's the perfect opportunity to go down into that not so clean water we're in five meters but it doesn't look particularly pleasant and uh, do some scraping not before coffee though. Need a coffee. So what happened? Two issues. The first is when we left the marina yesterday, we had no steerage because we'd lost torque in the prop because the prop's covered in barnacles. A little bit scary actually coming out of the marina, but anyway, uh, at least we know that's a straightforward problem. So I went down to clean the barnacles, which I've done. The other issue we've had, we developed um, a month or so ago, and I guess it's from so much motoring, is our rope stripper. And our rope stripper is made up of three main parts and it's attached to the shaft, and to the P-bracket. Um, in among those three pieces is one piece which over time has started rattling and, and moving and this is creating this vibrating noise that we're hearing. So what I wanted to do was to try and remove um, a couple of those components. Unfortunately the end bracket which is attached to the shaft, it's made up of two pieces and fit like that with two allen bolts, um, is stuck fast so I undid the allen bolts I couldn't take it off, uh, attempted to wedge it open with a screwdriver uh, and then eventually took a uh, claw hammer down to it but it's just not budging so there's not much I can do about it really unless I give it another go and put something much bigger down there to get a better um, leverage to prise them open but the water here is uh, the visibility is appalling there's all kinds of weird gungy murky stuff floating around lots of fish but um, yeah so I wasn't able to do that part of it which is a bit of a shame so we might have to put up with that rattle until we get to better waters and we have more time to sort it out So we're leaving Jakarta on our way to the Thousand Islands and uh, behind you, over your left shoulder, is the skyline of Jakarta which is almost unidentifiable through the haze and that's one of the main things that I won't miss about Jakarta is the air pollution is appalling, um, visibility is not good, you can really see it here. The other thing I won't miss, of course, is the traffic. So from getting from A to B was ridiculously uh, long. Never been anywhere as bad as that. But mostly, I will miss Jakarta because we loved it. But yeah, the haze, the pollution, we've both been sniffing and coughing. I'm hoping by the time we get north of the Thousand Islands, 
will have cleared up a bit. Well, as Liz was saying, uh, visibility terrible. And at the moment, the sea is uh, some kind of green that I've never seen before. As you know, I spent a bit of time in that water earlier. I'm looking at it from up here, it looks horrible. If you remember when we came in here, we saw a huge amount of rubbish and as we've been leaving, we've been seeing occasionally whole sort of streams of rubbish, presumably current, bringing it up and lining it in a big long mile stretch across the front of Esper's Bow. So it's always a bit of a worry that perhaps there could be things floating in that that we might catch on the prop. Um, over my shoulder are the islands that we passed uh, on the other side when we came down this way and uh, you can barely see any detail at all. It really is so hazy today. It'd just be nice to see uh, how much this changes over the next uh, 30 miles or so. We've got very different conditions today as we leave Jakarta to those that we had when we came into Jakarta. Absolutely flat, no wind. Of course it means there's no chance of sailing. But on the other hand, it doesn't matter too much at the moment because we want to use up some of this Indonesian fuel. So we don't mind too much the fact that we've got a motor. But yeah, dead flat, whereas if you remember when we came in, God, it was really uncomfortable, quite windy and very choppy, nasty, churny water. So we've got about 30 miles to get to the uh, anchorage tonight. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> a bit rolly, uh, nothing much to report other than the fact that the water is now more blue and interestingly if you look at the satellite imagery of this area you can see quite clearly that around Jakarta the water is much more murky and then as we approach the Thousand Islands it does get blue from above and you can see all the reefs and this is evident here as well we've passed over into that clearer water and uh, the sky is definitely cleared as well. We can actually see, I mean, okay, we've got a bit of cloud, but uh, you can also see that blue sky and it's proper blue. It's not that haziness that we were getting earlier. So nice to be free of the pollution of Jakarta, much as we love that place. our first taste of Thousand Islands, Thousand Island dressing and you can see just behind me there's a little island just there and then there's a reef that runs around there and then over on the north side uh, same thing we've got a reef running on there, a little island there and another reef and so it goes on. So when you look at the chart of course it looks like there's lots of uh, bits of land but actually it's drying land so from the boat we're not going to see half the things that we can see on the chart obviously so it can be a bit disconcerting sometimes um, but it seems as if the charts are pretty accurate around here I don't want to speak too soon but compared to the, uh, the satellite imagery it's looking all right so we're just going to cut through here and then we're going up to one of the larger islands and anchoring in a channel just south of uh, one of these islands big enough that it's actually got um, points of interest on Google Maps uh, the rest of the uh, islands though are much smaller.
Well, I went for a little snorkel just over on the reef just alongside Esper and it's not too bad I'd give the reef maybe five or six out of ten for coral and for fish there's quite a bit of dead coral but there's also some uh, pretty coral as well and there were a few fish but I would say they're a bit shy and not quite as many as I would normally expect so but uh, it's just nice to be in clear clearer waters without loads of plastic and crap floating around We've just landed the dinghy on uh, Kaliaga Basal. Kaliaga Basal. And Benny's very kindly took the painter from us and has allowed us to come on and have a look around here. So this is the larger island. There's a smaller island, Kaliaga Kachil, next door. But we're going to have a look and see what's going on here. You didn't want to come in on your helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, black <Okay>. hoy. <laughs> Well that was Pula Kaliaj, shame we couldn't show you very much of it at all. We got as far as that little bit where we met lovely Benny and we saw the helipad and we could see through the trees some quite interesting looking buildings but nah, not allowed on, it's private, privately owned. So Benny who had given us to understand that we could go on, I realised after a while I just said yes, yes to everything we asked him. So we were put right by an Australian whose name I can't remember, who uh, works on the big boat there. He fucking works on that fucking boat and he does fucking easy. He's so fucking Aussie, he's brilliant. Very nice guy. But he made it clear, not allowed on the island. So, hey ho, you win some, you lose some. Back to the boat. Gin and tonic, cheers. Good morning. Noisy, isn't it? Uh, this is one of the problems with the anchorage we're at is uh, constant traffic coming up and down this channel because you've got the, the main, I suppose, the capital island just over there, capital island of the Thousand Islands. So we get a lot of fishing boats and uh, tourist boats as well coming through, but uh, it's been a nice, pleasant stay just being able to swim in those clear waters. Shame we didn't get to see the island, but today we're going to go off to another little uh, island called Maja and I think it's called Maja and there's an eco-tourist spot there now Liz has been in touch with them and they've been uh, very happy for us to come uh, come along and check it out so we thought we'd drop, try and find someone to drop the hook there's no uh, dedicated anchorage there's nothing on the charts uh, there's no recommended places to drop the hook but we've checked the uh, the depths and it kind of uh, there's a 20 meter contour line and a five meter contour line just north of the island so I'm, I'm hoping we might find somewhere to to anchor there if not we might have to find somewhere else but uh, let's let's give it a go so we've left the first anchorage at thousand islands we're on our way to pulau machan um it's only about an hour away but what's interesting is the amount of reefs around all of the islands and off the islands. So there's quite a bit of navigating going on here. We're losing all-in-one offline maps, obviously, which, which gives us a very clear indication of where the reefs are in conjunction with Navionics. And unlike the western side of Sumatra, Navionics seems to be a lot more accurate so far. So uh, we're doing quite well, but obviously eyeballing uh, a lot both up on deck on watch carefully as we uh, as we make our way to Pula Machan. Well, as Liz said, a lot of these islands have reefs around them and it's quite disconcerting because in a lot of cases there's more reef than island. So as you look at an island, say the one we're approaching now, uh, the cardinal mark, the westerly cardinal mark, is way out at sea because between that and the island obviously is a lot of reef. Aside from that, it's quite fun going to a place that you didn't plan to go to so this was never really on our schedule and so we just decided to go in at the last minute had absolutely no expectations of the Thousand Islands when you look at it on the charts having not visited it it really looks quite intimidating it really does because it's just reefs and rocks everywhere uh, the only expectation I had was that this was going to be absolutely ram-packed with tourists 
and that doesn't seem to be the case. The only uh, traffic on the waters are local and we've already passed the main tourist town which is back down there. So yeah, that's um, it's one of the fun things about this cruising life is dropping into places uh, which few people have been to and um, and you know you have no expectations of. It's great. So the sun's setting here in uh, beautiful Tiger Island and we've just met Monique and Johan who've just come back from a scuba trip and it turns out that Johan has a winery. <laughs> so he's our new best friend and this is his wine. What's it called? Saba Bay. Saba Bay and it's a... Bar from Bali. Yes, yes from Bali. It's, it's from Bali and uh, he suggested that we might like a glass so we said yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's jolly good, I have to say, it's really good for a tropical climate. It's nice, it's, it's not acidic, it's, it goes down very well. So cheers. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Monique, oh, cheers. Can, <laughs> Monique, just very quickly, can you stand up oh, and show yes. off your swimming I costume? <laughs> okay, cheers. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> 